Okay, in this video, we are gonna be working out the parametric equations of a cycloid. And you'll see it's just a combination of a lot of things that you probably already know if you've worked with parametric equations a little bit and you've done some trig stuff. So uh, what we'll start with is kind of the basic idea, right? So a cycloid is the curve that you get if you take a look at one point. So we're gonna focus in on this point, this green point down here. We're gonna look at that point and where it goes if we roll this circle horizontally. So if I start, um, what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna let the point roll around the circle. I'm not gonna move the circle. So uh, this point is moving around a circle, right? If the circle that it's moving around doesn't move, it just goes in a circle. The question we're gonna try to answer is what happens when the circle is also moving? Specifically, we're gonna let it move horizontally so what path is that little particle or point traveling on? We're gonna work out the equations of that. First, we need to understand what happens when the circle doesn't move, right? So if it doesn't move, and the way that I have it centered right now, I'm gonna treat the x-axis as kind of like the ground, and it's going to, the circle ultimately will roll along the x-axis. So you can see the radius is two right now, which means that the center is at zero, two. So the y-coordinate of the center is two, the x-coordinate is zero. Let's just focus on the x-coordinate, right? So the x-coordinate starts in the middle, goes to a minimum, back to the middle, goes to a maximum, and then goes back to the middle. And then it'll continue forever unless we stop it. So you think about what trig function do you know that does that? Well, the trig function you know that starts in the middle, goes to a minimum, is a negative sine graph. So now the question is, what happens as we move the circle, right? So what happens to this negative sine graph? Well, if I were to move up and down, think about it. If you move up and down, the x values don't change, but the y values do. So the function determining the x coordinate won't really change. It actually won't change at all if I could move perfectly, which I apparently can't. So you can see moving up and down doesn't change the x coordinate at all, um, which doesn't actually matter for our purposes because we're gonna let this roll along the x-axis. So what I'm really worried about is what happens as I move left or right. So let's take a look. Right now, the sinusoidal axis is zero, the minimum is negative two, the maximum is two. So as I move to the right, the sinusoidal axis is increasing. In fact, now the sinusoidal axis is two, and the x-coordinate of the center is two. Go to three, and the correspondence still happens. So it looks like the x-coordinate of the center is the sinusoidal axis of the equation that's determining x, which kind of makes sense if you think about it, right? We're at the center and we can go to the minimum and then back to the center and then to the maximum. So that will make sense. Um, what about the amplitude? So uh, if I change the radius of the circle, so now I have a radius of three, and you can see on my graph, I can go down to a minimum, I'm back at x equals zero. I can go to a minimum of negative three, a maximum of positive three, Looks like the radius of the circle is the amplitude. Um, four, five, yeah, it seems to definitely be working. Okay, so based on what we now know, the equation that determines x will be a negative sine curve and its sinusoidal axis will be whatever the x coordinate is of the center and its amplitude will just be whatever the radius of the circle is. So I think we're probably done with x. Now what's happening with y? So let's take a look. Uh, I'm gonna try to turn this on right now. Okay, so y is, let's get back to the beginning. Uh, so when you're at the beginning, you're at the minimum, and that's actually enough information. You're at the minimum, right? Which trig function do you know that does that? Negative cosine. So if I were to move up and down, you can see like the range of possible y values would change, right? If I move up, the range of possible y values changes. If I move down, it changes again. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna move horizontally. So if I move horizontally, if I could perfectly do it, you can see that the y equation doesn't change, which means we're actually gonna be done with the y equation, right? So the sinusoidal axis for the y equation looks like it's the y-coordinate of the center, which is actually just the radius of the circle. So if I change 
the radius to three and then move my circle so it's back on the ground, which is the x-axis. Let's move this down. You can see that the amplitude of this graph is now three. If I make the radius four and move up, you can see the amplitude is now four. It's still a negative cosine graph though. So I think what we've got is a lot of information, right? So let's take a look and summarize this part. Uh, I'm gonna just stop this, stop, reset. Okay, so I think so far we have a conclusion we can draw. The X coordinate is gonna be determined by a negative sine function uh, because you start in the middle and then you go to the minimum. Uh, the sinusoidal axis will be the X coordinate of the center of the circle. But that value changes as the circle rolls because we're rolling to the right, basically. The amplitude, on the other hand, is gonna be the radius of the circle, which if we change the radius, will change, but in general doesn't change. Uh, the Y coordinate is gonna be determined by a negative cosine function because you start at the bottom, and that's the trig function that does that. The sinusoidal axis is gonna be the Y coordinate of the center, um, but it turns out the Y coordinate of the center because of the way we're drawing it is actually just the radius of the circle. And then the amplitude is also the radius of the circle. So as long as we're going horizontally, we're done with the y coordinate. The function that determines it is going to be y equals r minus r cosine of t. I'm using t instead of theta here. Um, or you could write it as r the quantity one minus cosine of t. So, so far we finished y, and now we need to figure out what's happening with x. The problem with x is this part right here the value changes as the circle rolls. So let's see if we can figure out how it changes. So instead of looking at this part, which was pretty helpful, right? It helped us to figure out um, that we're looking at a negative sine graph in some way for x, and we're looking at a negative cosine graph, and we actually know the negative cosine graph for y. Now what we wanna do is we wanna let this thing move. So let's go to this. So I've got the center, uh, or rather the radius is just one for this. Uh, no, it isn't, yes it is. The radius is one. So we start at zero, zero, the center is at zero, one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let this thing start rolling. And what's happening here, if you see it, it's like the circle is just unwrapping itself. And what we wanna do is figure out like what's happening. So back at the start, the segment, right? The center is directly above the point. And if I start rolling, you can see that it's unwrapping along the x-axis. So here, when uh, this segment is actually the distance traveled by the center, but this segment is just the arc length that we've traveled unwrapped along the x-axis. So when I've gone, I don't know, a quarter of the way, right? A quarter of the way, it looks kind of like 1.5. But think about what's a quarter of a circle in radians. A quarter of a circle is um, pi over two, which is like 1.5-ish, right? 3.14 divided by four. Uh, what if we go halfway? So halfway would be um, just pi, right? Because it's two pi all the way around. So if I go halfway, it should be like 3.14-ish. And if you look at that, it's working. So it looks like the distance that the center has traveled is actually the arc length that the point moving along the circle has traveled. Uh, let's keep going. So here I get to like five. And uh, so the idea here is that the arc length we have traveled is five. If I go uh, all the way, that would be two pi, right? So two pi, this segment is now two pi. The center has traveled two pi. And that's also the arc length that we have gone is uh, two pi because uh, the circumference of the circle is two pi r and the radius is one. So we've gone two pi. So it looks like, let me go back to uh, the start here. It looks like the distance traveled by the center or specifically the x coordinate of the center is always the arc length. So now we need to think like, how do we calculate arc length? Well, uh, depending on how you have it memorized, to calculate a, an angle in radians, it's uh, the arc length divided by r, right? Theta equals s over r. So that would mean that s is equal to r times theta. So when I'm a quarter of the way, it would be, in this case, r is one, it would be one times pi over two. 
which would be, seems about right. Uh, here, it would be uh, one times pi, which definitely looks right. And then here, it looks like one times two pi, which it would definitely be right. So it looks like we kind of know how to do this. It looks like what we're gonna do is say that the x coordinate of the center is just um, r times theta, it seems. Um, so what I'm gonna do, take a look at uh, a more random size radius. So here, we can actually control it. And I've also added in something else. So uh, let me just kinda, let's start rolling. So you can see I, I created a circle that will always just show you it rotating, but not, okay, so rotating around the circle, but the circle's not moving. So you can see how that's happening. And then also, we have the circle that is rolling and kind of unwrapping itself. Um, and what's really nice about this is that we can see, so right now the radius is 2.5. So if I go one radian, so let's go one radian, you can see that we're at about 2.5. So let's go instead, uh, let me make the radius equal two, right? If the radius is two and I've gone one radian, then the arc length that this point has traveled around the circle is exactly r times theta, two times one, which gives us two, the length of this segment, which is the x coordinate of the center. And now if I go to two, it'll be two times two. And two times two, it, uh, two times two is four. That's the center, right? That's the x coordinate of the center. If I keep going, it'll be, here, when we get to three, you can see that it's three times two. What if the radius was, um, what if the radius is three, right? So when the radius is three, when we've gone one radian, then the center will have traveled three units. When we've gone two radians, we will have traveled six units because that's three times two. And then when we go, you know, let's, whatever, it's always just multiplying. So if we go four, it'll be four times three is 12. And you can see that the X coordinate is in fact 12. So it looks like we've sort of worked out what's happening there. So the X coordinate, the Y coordinate's always just two or always just the radius, I should say. Um, the X coordinate of the center always seems to be R times theta. So now what we wanna do is basically just combine these ideas, right? So the Y coordinate we'd already worked out the x-coordinate, I think we've worked out now. So let's let's see. The y-coordinate we had already worked out was r minus r cosine of t, or if you prefer, r the quantity one minus cosine of t. Our issue was we need to figure out what was happening with the x-coordinate. I think we did it. So in any given time interval, the x-coordinate of the vertex travels the same distance as the point on the circle, which is an arc length that the point on the circle is traveling. So the point on the circle travels an arc length, arc length is given by s equals rt. So that means if we combine that, we said that the x coordinate of the center, if I go back up, the x coordinate of the um, center would be the sinusoidal axis. The x coordinate of the center would be the sinusoidal axis. We've now figured out the x coordinate of the center is r times t. So the sinusoidal axis for x is r times t. And then we know it's a negative sine graph that has an amplitude of r. So we can say that the x coordinate is r times t minus r times sine of t. I got confused halfway through saying that. Um, so now we have all of the equations. So I think that we can say the parametric equations of a cycloid are rt minus r sine of t for x and r minus r cosine of t for y. Or you can factor out the r's, which is usually how you see it written. But I think it makes more sense to not factor them out and kind of like leave them in there and think about what's actually happening. So let's take a look at uh, one last thing, which is the actual cycloid. So let's actually see what happens um, if I, so the radius right now is three and I am going to animate. So let's see. So there's our point moving and you can see the equations that the point is following are three T minus three sine of T comma three minus three cosine of t. And I'm letting it roll backwards and forwards. So if I make it, I don't know, smaller, you can see the equation just updates for us. Uh, 
So now it's two. So we get two t, that's the x coordinate of the center of the rolling circle, minus two, which is the radius of the rolling circle, sine of t, because you start in the middle, and then x goes to a minimum, and then the middle and the maximum, so it's a negative sign. And then the y coordinate is two, which is the radius of the circle, and also the y coordinate of the center of the circle, which will not change, and then minus two cosine. So two here is the radius again, cosine because you're starting at the bottom for y, and then it'll move to the middle, then the top. Uh, so let's animate this. And there you go. I mean, that's definitely what the cycloid looks like, and that's how we can arrive at these if we just know how to use GeoGebra a little bit um, and know some trig stuff. So uh, I put all of these together if you're interested in looking at them uh, in this thing. And you can just kind of like click through it and see what's happening. Uh, so there's going to be a link to that, I guess, in the description. Uh, and I hope you found this helpful. So good luck.